My mother's dead. My lord, they say five moons were seen tonight. Four fixed, and the fifth did whirl about the other four in wondrous motion. Five moons? Old men in bedlams do prophecy upon it dangerously. Young Arthur's death is common in their mouths. And when they speak of him, they shake their heads and whisper one another in the ear. <sighs> and he that speaks doth gripe the hearer's wrist whilst he that hears makes fearful action with wrinkled brow with nods with rolling eyes I saw a smith stand with his hammer thus the whilst his iron did on the anvil cool with open mouth swallowing a tailor's news who with his shears and measure in his hand standing on slippers which his nimble haste had thrust falsely upon contrary feet told of the many thousand warlike french embattled and ranked in kent another lean unwashed artificer cuts off his tail and talks of arthur's death Why seekst thou to possess me with these fears? Why urgest thou so oft young Arthur's death? It was thy hand that murdered him. I had a mighty cause to wish him dead, but thou hadst none to kill him. What, my lord, did I provoke you? Oh, it is the curse of kings to be attended by slaves that take their humours for a warrant to break within the bloody house of life, and on the winking of authority to understand a law, to know the meaning of dangerous majesty when perchance it frowns more upon humour than on advised respect. Here is your hand and seal for what I did. Ooh. Oh, when the last account twixt heaven and earth is to be made, then shall this hand and seal witness against us to damnation. How oft the sight of means to do ill deeds make deeds ill done. Hadst not thou been by a fellow by the hand of nature marked, quoted and signed to do a deed of shame, this murder had not come into my mind. But taking note of thy abhorred aspect, finding thee fit for bloody villainy, apt, liable to be employed in danger, I faintly broke with thee of Arthur's death. And thou, to be endeared to a king, made it no conscience to destroy a prince Lord. But shook thy head or made a pause when I spake darkly what I purposed or turned an eye of doubt upon my face as bid me tell my tale in express words. Deep shame had struck me dumb, made me break off and those thy fears might have wrought fears in me. But thou didst understand me by my sign and didst in signs again parley with sin. Yea, 
without stop didst let thy heart consent and consequently thy rude hand to act the deed which both our tongues held vile to name. Out of my sight! sight, 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 sight. And never never see see me more! My nobles leave me. My state is braved, even at my gates, with ranks of foreign powers. And in the body of this fleshly land, this kingdom, this confine of blood and breath, hostility and civil tumult reigns between my conscience and my cousin's death. <clears throat> Arm you against your other enemies. I'll make a peace between you and your soul. Young Arthur is alive. This hand of mine is yet a maiden and an innocent hand. Not painted with the crimson spots of blood. Within this bosom never entered yet the dreadful motion of a murderous thought. And you have slandered nature in my form, which, however rude exteriorly, is yet the cover of a fairer mind. than to be butcher of an innocent child.